story of Lawrence Anini, the bandit that terrorized Benin City. <laughs> Anini, also known as the law, carried out some of the most brutal robbery attacks in Nigerian history and repeated them with increasing sophistication, boldness and arrogance that surpassed the atrocities of many before him in the early 1980s. Anini was a severe national security threat and an embarrassment to the Nigerian police force. Despite limiting its atrocities to Bendel State, now known as Edo and Delta States and its surroundings. Between August and December 1986, he ran a reign of terror in which he killed, robbed, raped and kidnapped at will, daring the highest ranks of police force by attacking the convoy of police commissioner and an assistant inspector general of the police. Hello viewers, welcome to another informative video on the channel as we look at the notorious Nigerian criminal known as Lawrence Anini. But before we get into the details, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so as to be the first to be notified on our future uploads. Without further delay, let's take a look where it all began. Early Life Lawrence Lomayagbon Anini was born in the town of Orogo, around 100 kilometers from Benin City. His father, who died in 1980, had a son with another woman, and he was the second child and the only son of his mother, Madame Akugeya Ogadumwambe's three children. Anini's ambition when he arrived to Benin City was to become a driver. He learned to drive and began working as a taxi driver in the city. Despite his youth, his word was law at the motor park, as he had gained a reputation for handling motor park crises. He subsequently got into organized crime, working as a transporter for numerous gangs, godfathers, and other criminals. Later, he formed his own gang, which included Monde Osunbo, Efege, and others, and engaged in carjacking, bus attacks, and bank robberies. They gradually spread their influence to cities to the north and the east of Benin City. Anini's Acts of Terror Anini and his gang robbed First Bank in Sabongida Ora, Edo State, in August 1986, stealing $2,000 and killing a police officer and a kid. Anini drove into a local market on October 21, 1986, after stealing 46,000 naira from the African Continental Bank branch in Agbo, and tossed part of the money from his getaway car to bystanders. This action, which he is said to have repeated many times, gave him the nickname Robin Hood, after a British folklore character who robbed the wealthy and distributed the earnings to the needy. Anini was ruthless, and police officers were among his main targets. Anini and his crew are said to have slain a total of 20 people, including 11 police officers and 9 civilians. The December 15, 1986 edition of This Week magazine, which was viewed by Newsroom, cited Anini, who only spoke in Pidgin English, saying, I did not kill police. To do things on my own is to do things on my own. I drive because I am a driver. I always beg them not to kill police officers or civilians. My issue with the police is that they killed my father, brother and friend Kingsley Eweka in Ibadan. Kingsley alias Baba K and Kele, two members of his gang, were prosecuted and tried that year for paying bribes to senior police officers in order to destroy evidence against the gang members. Anini allegedly mistook this encounter for a police betrayal, prompting him to take retaliatory action. Writing letters to his victims Anini felt so confident that he began writing letters to his possible victims, informing them of his upcoming visit. And he was always true to his word, arriving at the appointed time and date. In August of 1986, Anini wrote a letter to the manager of the new Nigeria Bank's Ring Road branch in Benin City, informing the bank that he planned to visit at any time and that the sum of 10,000 naira should be laid aside for him. This is according to Charles Enon Chong's book, The Rise and Fall of Anini. Anini gave his address as number one million anywhere street within the city, Benin Bendal State, according to the report. 
Rather than reporting to the police, the bank rushed to the Oba of Benin to inform the traditional authority about Anini's letter. In the city, there was widespread belief that the police could not be trusted. Many residents who may have provided information to the police that assisted Anini's arrest feared that they would be accused of being collaborators or that the police would send their identities to Anini and some even feared for their lives. After a meeting of the Armed Forces Ruling Council in October 1986, the then head of state Ibrahim Babangida questioned the Inspector General of Police, Etim Imyang, and demanded Anini's whereabouts. Anini reportedly wrote to the head of state in October of 1986 saying, Tell our president we like him, but we are not happy here in Bendel. Everything is too expensive to pay for. That is why I now share any money I obtain among the people. Anini's arrest. Anini was thought to be a spirit with magical abilities who could teleport and so disappear at will, according to popular belief. However, on the 3rd of December 1986, he was arrested in a residence in Benin City, near the second and third circle roads. His girlfriend is said to have betrayed him. Several witnesses claimed that when the police knocked on the door of the room, Anini opened it himself. When questioned, where is Anini? He tried to be as clever as possible. He said, oh, Anini is under the bed in the inner room, and quickly walked by Omanaroro and his squad. Omanaroro drew his weapon and fired a shot towards Anini's left ankle. When asked if he was Anini again, at that time he said, my brother, I won't deceive you. I won't tell you a lie. I'm Anini. He was apprehended and taken to the police headquarters before being sent to a military hospital where his injured leg was amputated. His sentence and execution. Following his arrest, the country's military leader, Ibrahim Babangida, sought a swift trial. Anini was found guilty of most of the allegations leveled against him and executed on March 29, 1987 in front of a national television broadcast. Anini's village was raided by the authorities in 1985 and many of the locals were arrested, including his younger sister, Madame Akugehia Ogadomwambe, his mother, who was also imprisoned but later released, told This Week magazine in 1987 that she and other members of her family were tortured in police custody. Anini's crimes left a stain on his family, and his children claim that even 34 years after his death, they are still labeled as son of a criminal every time they walk on the street. If I pass now for road life, people there like they point me say, you know, say uh, that when Anini picture, not that they hide, I'm not they hide myself, for even Nigeria government. As I did, yes, even the Iraq government know me. There you have it, explorers. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. And if you found the video informative enough, ensure to hit that subscription button. Give us a like while you're leaving your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>